The Magic Swan Once upon a time, in a little town far away, there lived a family of three brothers. Their names were Jack, Leo, and Peter. The eldest, Jack, was a baker. He could bake the best tasting bread and cakes in all the land, and people from all over would come to buy it. Leo was the second brother, and he was a teacher. He was very smart, and the children he taught loved him very much. Peter was the youngest, but he did not have any talents that made him stand out. He was a kind and nice young man, but he often felt very sad when he saw his brothers work. His brothers were very mean to him. They always taunted him mercilessly since they thought they were more important than him. They were never kind to him even once. What is this? It's, it's soup, brother. I made it just the way you like it. Soup? How is this watery thing called soup? And I definitely don't like this. My poor good bread wasted on this salty onion drink. Take it away, seriously. Jack is the best baker in this place. I am a magnificent teacher, as you know. So what exactly can you do? I can, well, you can't even cook a proper soup. <laughs> Are you really our brother? I'm leaving. Peter, clean up this mess you've made. What? Wait, what about the... Oh, you can have the whole pot of it to yourself, my silly useless brother. Poor Peter was very hurt, but he sat down and said nothing. The next day, Peter went to the forest and sat there quietly. He was thinking about the life he lived and how rude his brothers were. What do I do? Both my brothers are really good at what they do. Am I really of no use to anyone? <sighs> what are you grumbling about, you silly young man? Ho! Oh! The old man came up to Peter and groaned as he sat down slowly beside him. <sighs> what do you grumble about at such a young age? It, it's nothing important. I was just thinking aloud. Well, if yours wasn't important, then listen to mine. I have lots of things to grumble about. Oh, like what? Like that baker Jack. What a terrible baker. His bread is so hard and he smells so bad. I feel like I'm smelling my own feet. That can't be his bread. I, I have tasted the bread he makes, and it is almost as delicious as a sweet cake. Oh? Well then, listen to another. There is this teacher that I spoke to yesterday. I thought he would be intelligent, but he was extremely dull. I feel sorry for the children he teaches. What was his name? Uh, ah, yes. It's Leo. Leo? I have heard he is the best teacher here. His students love him very much. I do think you are very much mistaken. Hmm? How funny. Your brothers treat you so badly, and yet you still won't say anything bad about them. Well, they are my... Wait, how do you know they are my brothers? <laughs> At that moment, the old grumbling man turned into a lovely fairy with a voice as clear as crystal. Oh, who, who are you? I am the fairy of good hearts. I have seen you many times and have noticed how kind you are even to those who taunt you. Oh, so you knew all along. Well, yes, I did. <laughs> Peter, let me help you. The world is huge, and if you are not happy here, why don't you leave your home and try and find something for yourself? But where would I go? And what would I do? That I will tell you. When you start your journey, you will see a man sleeping soundly under a tree. He will have a beautiful white swan tied next to him. 
which you must untie and take with you. <laughs> a fine companion for my travels? Not just fine, but a magical one. When anyone sees it, they will want to touch its lovely soft feathers. And when they do, shout out, Hold on, little swan! And they will get stuck to it. Like this, many people will get stuck. And with them all, you must go to the palace. There you will meet your destiny. Um, why are you asking me to do such a strange thing? You will know when the time comes. <laughs> Remember to do as I've told you. Oh, and when you're done, tell the swan, let them go, beautiful swan, and everyone will be free. Well, goodbye, sweet Peter. The fairy waved her magical wand and vanished into thin air. It was now late and Peter rushed home to cook for his brothers before they returned. The next day, early in the morning, Peter left the house, making sure not to wake his brothers. He walked for a long time as the sun began to rise. On his way, just as the fairy had said, he came upon a huge man sleeping soundly under a tree. And there, tied next to it, was the most beautiful swan Peter had ever seen. Ha! Huh. This man is fast asleep. Taking the swan will be easy. And so he undid the rope and took the swan swiftly and quietly away. He reached a kingdom. There he carried his swan through the streets, looking at all the marvelous things around him. While he was walking, he saw a man staring at the swan. Here, boy, that swan is simply gorgeous. May I pet it? Oh, of course you may. Go right ahead. The man touched the swan in glee and started petting it. Hold on, little swan. And almost immediately, the man got stuck to the swan. He couldn't pull his hand away, no matter how much he struggled. Why am I stuck to this swan? Why can't I let go of my hand? Is this magic? Ah, uh, help me! Peter just smiled at the man and started walking. The man kept calling out and people started to stare. Out of them was a chimney sweep. She saw the man stuck to the swan and came to help him. Help! Someone free me! Here, grab a hold of me. I'll pull you off. And the minute Peter saw this, he shouted out loudly, Hold on, little swan! And now the poor chimney sweep was stuck fast to the angry man. What is this? Let go of me! Let go of me right now! Ouch! Stop hitting me with that dirty brush! Together they went down the streets, attached to each other. The people saw this and began to laugh at the sight. On the way, they met a clown on a unicycle. Ho, ho, ho! I've seen little baby elephants holding on to the tails of their mothers. Why do you imitate them? Stop laughing and help us get free! As soon as he reached his hand out, Peter screamed aloud, Hold on, little swan! Ow, ow! Uh, uh, let, ah, let me go, Ooh, or I'll fall off! I am not holding on to you! Liar! You tricked me! Let go of me right now! No! <laughs> the people laughed to see the line all stuck together at the end of a swan's tail. Together, they made their way to the palace. I have almost reached the palace, but I have no idea what to do here. Just then, a most beautiful golden carriage came riding up near them. In it sat the kingdom's beloved Princess Leah. She was a very beautiful young lady, but had ceased to smile or laugh since her mother's death. But as she looked out at the line of people stuck together in such a hilarious way to the end of a swan's little feathery tail, she burst out laughing. <laughs> oh my goodness! What is this strange sight I see? <laughs> 
The king heard of the news of his princess laughing and sent for those who had made her laugh. And when they entered and he saw it too, the king roared with laughter. Oh, 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 <laughs> this is the funniest thing I have ever seen. <laughs> Peter was quite amused at all of this. He looked back at the angry and confused people who had gotten themselves in this mess and felt sorry for them. I guess I should set them free now. Let them go, beautiful swan. And all at once, the whole line of people were finally free. Huh? Ah! Whoa, whoa! They were so relieved but so overcome with fright that they raced out of the palace screaming for their lives. <laughs> so, you are the man who made my daughter laugh. <laughs> I am so glad to hear her lovely, happy voice after so many years. I cannot thank you enough. It is my pleasure, great king. Ma! Oh my! What a beautiful swan! It looks like it has been made from snow. May I touch it? Of course you may. And as she petted it, she suddenly looked and realized how handsome Peter was. Young man, is there anything you want as a reward for making my daughter laugh? Well, your highness, I would want nothing more than to marry your beautiful daughter. Her voice when she laughs sounds like bells ringing. Oh, well, um, I'm not very sure about... Father, I would want to marry him too, for he is the only man who has made me laugh. <laughs> So, the next day, Princess Leah and Peter were married off in a huge and grand ceremony. Leah, you're the most beautiful girl I have ever seen, and that smile of yours lights up my whole world. I promise to make you laugh and smile always. Oh, I love you, Peter. And thus, they lived happily ever after, and Peter realized that he didn't have to be someone important to do something great. He realized that being himself not only made him happy, it made him and the people around him content as well. <laughs>